Hello friends. This is a quick and dirty video about anchoring. I'm gonna do a longer winded version of this where I talk, I go into great detail about all aspects of anchoring, but this is a, you know, like I said, a, like a quick and dirty version, um, giving you guys the basic information about anchoring. Um, maybe you're new to boating, um, or maybe you've been boating your whole life, but you've never anchored. Anchoring can be intimidating, and it's definitely something that you should know how to do before you just attempt it because it is one of the easiest ways for you to lose your boat. But don't let that scare you away from anchoring because you know once you're educated on the proper ways to anchor, it's really not rocket science. Um, it's just a matter of like having the correct setup, knowing how to do it, and uh, putting everything in motion. So let's get into it and uh, talk about what you'll need to know to anchor your boat and it's gonna open up a whole new ton of places that you can go and relax and enjoy the water. Okay, first things first, um, this book is incredible. Chapman Piloting, Seamanship and Small Boat Handling. Now this book has an entire chapter dedicated to anchoring and, um, and, and every other subject you can imagine. Like uh, you could study this book and then extensively and take your captain's test and pass it. Like all the information to pass your Coast Guard captain's test is in this book. But even for a casual boater, a recreational boater, this book is going to teach you so much about navigation, about seamanship, about safety at sea, you name it. But they have a great section on anchoring. So if you're interested in studying further, you should pick a copy of this book and dive into it. So what do we need to know about anchoring? First thing you need to know is you need to have the appropriate anchor for your vessel, whether it's a powerboat, a sailboat, whatever. Um, you want to have an adequate anchor. So, and there's tons of charts online where you can go online and see, okay, my boat is this long. It weighs this much. This is the recommended anchor size. <clears throat> And a good rule of thumb is like whatever the recommended is, get 10 pounds heavier. Um, the recommended size for like a regular anchor for my boat, which is a 30 foot sailboat that displaces 9,000 pounds, is 25 pound anchor, which I have, so I got a 35 pound anchor. And my next anchor is going to be 45 pounds, which would be the equivalent to a storm anchor. Um, so, you know, it's better to upsize the anchor um, because it's just going to give you like extra security. The other thing to know is the anchor along with the chain and rope road is all called your ground tackle. So all of that together is called your ground tackle. The, um, the road, which could either be all rope or um, all chain or a combination of the two, which is more the most common setup. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough to get to um, allow you to pay out enough scope, which we'll talk about later, in the depth of water that you're normally gonna be anchoring in or you might find yourself anchoring in. <clears throat> so, we wanna have a good anchor that's the appropriate weight for our vessel and oversized if possible. Um, and then you wanna have <clears throat> the correct weight chain and uh, rope road for your vessel as well. So a lot of this comes down to what kind of boat you have and what conditions you're generally going to be anchoring in and what type of like sailing or boating that you find yourself doing. Um, are you just dropping the anchor to do some fishing? Are you dropping it? Are you dropping the anchor for a lunch hook so that you can just picnic, you know, in a beautiful area when you're, you're you do a day sail, do a lunch hook and then sail home because dropping a lunch hook or a, a hook for fishing, um, doesn't require nearly as much as you would need for an overnight stay. So let's say you've got your anchor, you've got your road set up, your ground tackle's all in place, and uh, you're motoring out to your island or coastline, you find you know a good protected area. Um, that's the other thing is you wanna research the area you plan on anchoring in, look at the depths, and you, know, you need to know, hopefully you have a depth sounder, otherwise you're gonna be using like a lead line. Um, but you know, know the depth of where you're gonna be anchoring, and then uh, when you arrive to the, uh, the protected bay where you plan on being, and you check the weather, make sure you know that you're not gonna have some, some strong winds that are putting you on a lee shore, meaning that the winds aren't gonna shift around and uh, place it so that you're being blown into the shore 
because then you start dragging you end up on the rocks so you want to pay attention to all that stuff so that you can make sure that you don't lose your boat you know due to like you know just not doing something as easy as checking the internet for the weather um so we find our bay we motor into it and the way i go about it is i motor around a couple times and uh if there's let's just say that there's no other boats in the anchors <clears throat> motor around find a sweet spot you know you don't necessarily want to be too close to a cliff face where a cliff face can give you protection from wind possibly um the surge will bounce off that cliff face and make really close to it can can be very uncomfortable and rolly so you kind of got to like feel it out find a, a good happy spot where you're not too close to shore but you're also protected enough for the crew and the captain and everyone to be comfortable staying under anchor okay so we found our bay we're motoring around we find our sweet spot let's say that we're going to anchor in 20 feet of water we're going to drop our hook in 20 feet of water um the next thing you need to know about is what's called scope and what that is is it's the the amount of road that you're going to pay out based on how deep the water is so the minimum that you ever want to do if you're doing an overnight stay the bare minimum with like perfect weather is five scope so five times whatever the depth is now that that's one thing to that you need to keep in mind is we talk about five scope to the depth of water now, if you read your depth sounder you say okay well it's 20 feet <clears throat> well you need to add the the draft of your boat on that so our boat is like four feet so that's 24 feet and then you want to add from the water line to where your anchor actually comes out so for our boat that's about three feet so so that's another seven feet on top of what my readout says so you know if i was just going off of my depth sounder i would be paying out less scope by quite a bit than what i think that i actually have out so your scope is determined from where your anchor normally lives, which is where your road's passing down to the seafloor. That's where you need to determine how much scope you want to pay out. And the, the best amount is like the, the recommended comfortable scope so that you don't have to worry is seven scope, but not all anchorages allow you that flexibility, especially if you're in a crowded anchorage where there's a lot of people. But try to never do less than five scope because it's, you're far more likely to drag if you pay out less than five scope. Okay, so we're in 20 feet of water, and then we got seven feet above that for my boat. So we wanna pay out five scope. So we drop our anchor and we pay out 135 feet is our total. But first you wanna set the hook. So let's pay out three scope, and then you tie off your chain or your rope road, and then you back the boat down real hard until she can't back up anymore. And that's gonna set your anchor into the seafloor and um, once you set then you slack off the reverse a little bit and you slowly back up pay out more and let the swell straighten you out the way you want to be until you have at least five scope or seven scope if you have the option that's gonna buy you if you pay out seven scope you're less likely gonna have to wake up in the middle of the night and pay out more scope when it's far more stressful um, I know from first-hand experience. Um, so if you can, always do seven scope. Um, in a crowded anchorage, you don't know what anybody else has out. You don't know how educated they are on anchoring. And that, you know, if one person has too much and one person has too little, boats can swing into each other when the tide shifts if you don't have a stern anchor out. In Southern California, generally we anchor with two anchors. We anchor with a bow anchor, and then we anchor with a stern anchor, which holds us into the swell or the wind or whatever. Um, that keeps boats from like spinning at 360 when the tides come in and out in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day, whatever. Um, but for this video, we're just talking about bow anchoring. And um, I have spoken to a number of people, I've spoken to a number of power boaters who told me that they thought they were only supposed to pay out three scope. Um, and not that all power boaters feel that way it's just the ones i've talked to that they have told me that so that's just a good example that you know you never know what your fellow boater sailboat powerboat whatever you never know what they have paid out um or if if they really studied anchoring before they went out and dropped the hook so that's something you need to think about okay so we've got our hook set 
we've paid out our five scope and um, now we sit and wait and I never leave the boat within an hour of setting the hook um, because you need to make sure that she's actually set uh, you can I'll generally look at landmarks or other boats that I'm anchored near, you know, and uh, see where they're at and remember where they're at and kind of just look around. And I just sit there on deck. I just hang out. And a lot of times Camille will take the dog ashore. They'll go play. They'll stretch their legs, whatever. But I, the captain should stay with the boat at least an hour. Like, it's very bad practice to drop your hook, set it. Okay, let's go ashore. You know, it's, it's a good way to lose your boat or have your boat drag into somebody else's boat. Um, so just take the time to just chill out, you know, have a drink, whatever, eat, eat something, just relax, sit around, see how she feels. Um, um, another thing you can do is there's a ton of anchor alarms on the market. I've never had any success with any of the ones I've tried. They always just go off randomly or I just can't rely on them or they never go off. Um, so what I've actually started doing is once we get the hook set, I open Navionics, which is like a, uh, an app that is commonly used on my iPad. And um, I start a track, like uh, you, you can start a track that'll follow your sail across or whatever. I start a new track as soon as I drop the hook. That way I can at any point open up that screen, look at it and see if we've moved. So generally you'll see some silliness that happens on the screen and uh, especially in the middle of the night because I'll get up several times first, especially the first night and uh, check the anchor and you'll see and if you see that you see like a motion on your tracker and then you see it's down here all of a sudden, you know you're dragging. And, um, and what you do, if you find yourself dragging, whether it's the middle of the night, middle of the afternoon, whatever, if you realize, oh, I'm dragging, <clears throat> Assess the situation if you're not close to shore or any other boats that you don't have to like call up and reset the anchor, then all you need to do is go forward and you pay out more scope. So pay out, you know, two times more scope and nine times out of 10, that will stop your dragging. Um, the best way to understand in the real world sense of how scope works is if you take your anchor with your, your chain or rope and you put it in the sand at the beach and you stand right above it and you pull it, it'll pull straight up. But if you put your, your anchor, just lay it on the beach and then you walk back 135 feet, which is our five scope we just talked about, and you try to pull that anchor out of the sand from that distance with that angle, you're not gonna be able to pull it. It's not gonna move, it's gonna just stop you. And that's exactly how scope works. It creates leverage of your boat, the vessel being pulled back and it digs in you know, and even when the tides swing around, it may dislodge for a second, but with you got enough scope out, it's going to bury that anchor and, you know, it's been working for centuries. <laughs> so, so there we are, middle of the night, a little bit of dragging, you know, or we feel nervous, pay out more scope as long as you know you're not going to swing into someone and you're not going to hit any rocks or obstacles. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's the gist of it. Um, and then when it's time to haul up, you, um, if you're by yourself, what I generally do is I have a manual windlass. So a lot of people have uh, electric windlasses, which are cool and they make the job a lot easier. Um, but uh, I have a manual windlass. So what I do is I'll put it in forward just a little bit <clears throat> to take off some of the pressure. And uh, then I'll walk forward and like slowly take in the rope road by hand until I get to the chain and uh, then put the chain in the uh, Wildcat and I'll go back and put it in neutral so we're just kind of drifting forward. And then I'll crank it up and uh, get the anchor up. And um, if you find that your anchor is stuck, you can, a couple things you can do. You can get it so that it's taut and then let the, the bow, like as the swell comes in, your bow will come up and sometimes it'll break it just from doing that. You can just wait and see how it does. Um, if, if it's still just like something's going on with it <clears throat> and it's not wanting to break or there's a lot of tension, um, you can drive forward just a little bit and it, it might trip it, you know, so it'll, it can trip it if you drive over it. But a buddy of mine in Oxnard, just like two weeks ago, he had this happen, it got stuck on a rock or something. And he told me that he drove forward just a little bit and it bent his entire, entire bow roller. 
um, and he stopped immediately, obviously. But um, so something to keep in mind. And if it's completely stuck, then what you'll need to do is pay out to your rope. If you have chain and rope, you pay out to your rope. You'll cut it and uh, hook a like a fender on, like one of your bumpers, and uh, throw it in the water so that you can come back and retrieve it if you have to get away right away. Um, or you can come back with scuba gear or whatever. Um, but you know, if you're aware of the bottom and stuff, hopefully you won't run into that situation. But at some point you might, you know, whether it's caught up in kelp or in rocks or whatever. So, um, so yeah, haul it up and head off. <clears throat> so that's the quick and dirty version. Um, I'm gonna do a much longer winded version of anchoring to explain to anyone who wants to know, you know, examples and more about ground tackle and all sorts of things. And, um, but for anyone who doesn't have time to watch that kind of lengthy video and they wanna get the, you know, the nuts and bolts of anchoring, that's basically the gist of it. And again, you can buy Chapman piloting book and uh, they'll read up all about it. And um, you'll really be educated if you review all the information in this book. <clears throat> and um, yeah, hopefully you'll, this video helps some of y'all out. And uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And uh, leave us a comment. If you got anything to say about it, you got any questions, I'll, I'll try to answer them. And um, keep an eye out for the long-winded version if you like that sort of thing. So uh, thanks for watching and fair winds until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time.